Hi everyone, and welcome back to our electronics tutorial series. My name is Aaron from AX Electronic, and today we're going to continue on the topic of BJTs as switches and talk about how we can implement them into some logic circuits. So if you've seen our MOSFET logic video, you know that we can use logic circuits to perform some very basic math operations, and that these logic circuits are actually how we do math with things like digital calculators and things like that. So these logic circuits are very important and allow us to do quite a bit of stuff. So we need to talk about how we can use these BJTs as switches in our logic circuits. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So again, I've got an NPN BJT shown right here. This is an NPN. And whenever we have a current from base to emitter, a larger current will flow from collector to emitter. Okay, and it has that property beta, which is equal to delta IC over delta IB. That tells us how much the uh, collector current is going to change if we change the base current. Now, we saw in the last video how we can use them as switches, and if we can use them as a switch, then we can make some logic circuits, because that's all we need in order to implement some logic circuits. Now, they do have some differences compared to the MOSFET logic circuits. And like we said, MOSFETs generally make better switches, so you're probably going to want to use MOSFETs, but if you only have BJTs, you can still definitely make some circuits with them. So let's go ahead and jump right in. We're not going to do as we're not going to do a logic review for this video because we already did one for the MOSFET logic video. If you need a logic review, go back and check out that video. That's going to tell you everything you need to know, need to know about some basic logic gates and logic circuits. So we're just going to go ahead and jump right in. So we have our pull-up resistor here, which we're just going to say is like a 10k. And then we also have our base resistor. So remember, we have to have a base resistor because this here acts like a diode. And if we just put like five volts across that diode, it's gonna conduct way too much current. And it's gonna cause our transistor to blow up. So we need to have this current limiting resistor here. I'm just gonna use 100 ohms. Now we are gonna check and see what happens if we put either VCC or zero volts here. And just FYI, this should be VCC here. So VDD means that we're using MOSFET logic because it's the voltage on the drain. VCC means we're using voltage on the collector, so we're using BJT logic, okay? That's just something that you should probably need to know. So let's start off with a case where we have zero volts here. So if we have zero volts here, there is no way that we're gonna be able to push current into that base because we can't overcome this diode drop, right? So we're not gonna be able to push current into our base, and that means our collector is not going to pull any current at all. Now there's no path. We're gonna assume that there's no current flowing this way because it's just an open circuit right now. If there's no path for this current to flow, then that means there's not gonna be any voltage drop across that resistor, okay? So there's no current here, and that means this voltage drop is going to be zero volts. So if we have VCC minus zero volts, that's still just VCC. So if we have a zero on our input, our output is going to be high, and that one just means high, or VCC. Now let's look at the other case. So let's say that we have a high voltage here, so we have like VCC. Well, now we can push current from the base to the emitter, and that's going to cause a current to flow from the collector to emitter. Now we're gonna assume that this thing is working like a really good switch, pulling a lot of current. That means that almost all of that voltage is gonna be dropped across this big resistor here. And if we have VCC minus something pretty close to VCC, we're gonna have zero volts on our output. So whenever we have a high input, we get a low output. Now those of you who watched our MOSFET logic video know that this is just an inverter, okay, or a NOT gate. So what it's going to do is that it is going to take whatever is on its input and it's going to flip it. And this here is the symbol for that inverter, just a triangle with a circle on the end. Now one thing that you'll notice is that compared to the MOSFET inverter, we had to have this extra resistor here because we had to limit the amount of current going into our transistor. So that makes this a little bit worse because now we have to have more components in order to do the same thing. But like I said, if you only have BJTs, this is still something you can accomplish using that base resistor. Now let's suppose that we don't want our inputs to be flipped. Maybe we just want a buffer. So we want whatever's on our input to appear on our output. Well, we know that we can just cascade two inverters to make something like that. So let's try it in doing it. So we're gonna check two cases where we have VCC or zero volts on our input and we want to see what happens at our output. And again, both of these should be VCC. Okay, VCC. So what's going to end up happening is that if we have zero volts on our input, let's say that we have zero volts on our input, no current flows here, and that means no current flows through this transistor, okay? 
Now, there is still a path for current to flow into the base of this next transistor, okay? So this is not going to be a perfect VCC right here. This is actually going to be 0.7 volts. But the moral of the story is that we are limiting the current somewhat using this 10K resistor. But if we design it correctly, what we're gonna see is that we will still have this current flowing into this transistor, and that's going to end up turning it on, okay? So that's gonna end up turning this on. Whereas if this transistor were working all the way, it would be turned off, which we'll see in a moment. So now this transistor, our second transistor, is turned on. Whenever it's turned on, that's gonna be dropping most of this voltage across our resistor, and we're gonna end up getting zero volts. Wait, that's not quite correct. Oh yes, yeah, so, sorry. So we've got zero on our input, and we're going to end up getting zero on our output. Now, let's switch this around. So let's say that instead of having a zero on our input, we have VCC. Well now, current will flow into the base. That means current will flow into the collector. Now we're going to drop most of this voltage across that resistor, and we're only gonna have zero volts here. Now, if we have zero volts here, no current is going to flow into the base. That means no current is going to flow in from into the collector. And in that case, the voltage drop across this resistor is about zero volts. So VCC minus zero is going to be VCC. So whenever we have a one on our input, we get a one on our output. Now, this is a buffer, okay? And it's just like this. And its job is just to pass its input to the output. And the reason that we might need this is that if you have some sensitive circuits that maybe can't provide very much current, you want a way of isolating them from whatever's downstream. So you can use these transistors in this buffer configuration to still pass that input to the output, but maybe provide a little bit more current without maybe loading down your input and causing it to start behaving all weird. Okay, so this does still have a use. So now let's look at a little bit of a more complex logic circuit. So now we have two inputs, A and B, and a single output. We still have our pull-up resistor here, and our current limiting resistors. And let's see what happens for all four cases. So I'm gonna go ahead and just write out all four cases here. So these are all the four combinations that these inputs can take. And we wanna see what the output does on each of them. So if both of them are low, neither one of them is going to get any base current whatsoever. That means neither one of them is pushing any collector current. So the voltage drop across this resistor, is gonna be zero. We're gonna see VCC on our output. So if both of them are low, we're going to get a high output. Now let's see if we turn B on. So if we turn B on, we're going to try and push, oops, we're gonna try and push as much current as possible through B. But A is still acting like an open circuit because it's not turned on. So A is going to limit the amount of current. So it doesn't matter if you have a short circuit in series with an open circuit, that open circuit is gonna dominate. And because of that, there's no current flowing through either transistor. That means we still have the same zero volt drop on the resistor, and that's going to create a high output. Now you can probably tell that if we flip the two cases, A and B, we're still gonna get that same one volt output because whichever one is open is going to end up limiting the current that can flow through, okay? So if either A or B is turned off, no current can flow through either one. Now, the special case happens whenever they're both turned on. So whenever they're both turned on, what we'll see is that they are both agreeing to pull current. Whenever that happens, instead of having this zero volt drop, we will have current through this resistor, and it's gonna be about VCC. It's gonna drop across it. And if we drop VCC, we're gonna end up with a zero on our output. And again, those of you who watched the MOSFET logic video are gonna know that this is a NAND gate. So a NAND gate looks something like that, N-A-N-D. And it's just gonna say that the output is going low whenever both of the inputs are high, okay? So we may not want a NAND gate, maybe we want an AND gate, so something where the output goes high whenever both of the inputs are high. Well, knowing what we know, we know that we can just add an inverter after this in order to create that, uh, that inverted NAND, okay? So if we, for example, have our NAND gate from before and then follow it by an inverter, that is the same thing as just an AND gate, okay? So let's take a look at this schematic and see. So we know that this right here is a NAND. And we know that this here is an inverter or a NOT. 
Now, notice that we don't have a resistor on this path, right? And we didn't actually need one because we have this one up here providing some resistance for us, okay? So that one is gonna be providing that resistance for us. And what we'll see, I'm gonna step through this very quickly, is that now, now we're gonna be behaving like an AND gate. So if either one of these are low, if either one of these are low, then no current is gonna flow through either one, meaning that this one is going to allow current to go into that base. And if current is going into this base, then there will be a voltage drop across this resistor that is about VCC. And we're going to get zero on our output. So as long as either one of them is low, we're gonna get that zero on our output. But whenever both of them agree on pulling current, then instead of current flowing into this base, Current is gonna take the path of least resistance and go through both of these transistors and no current is flowing into our second base. So this transistor doesn't have any current flowing into its base, so that means it's gonna have no collector current. And if there's no collector current, there's gonna be no voltage drop across this resistor. We're gonna get a high output, All right? So now we have got our AND gate, okay? So, one thing that I want you to notice is that for our MOSFET AND gate, we only had to have these two resistors up at the very top, our pull-up resistors. But now we have to have these extra inputs, okay? So we have to have these extra input resistors, making our circuit, again, a little bit more complicated. So that's going to be kind of the moral of all of these stories, is that using BJTs as logic circuits is possible, but it does take a few more components, okay? So it does take more components in order to implement them because BJTs just really aren't built to be as good as switches as MOSFETs. Now let's take a look at one last circuit. Okay, so we still have our two inputs A and B and our one output. And this is our 10K pull-up resistor and this is something like 100 and 100. Now, for this one, we have these two transistors in parallel. And if the two of them are in parallel, then short circuits are gonna dominate. So if either one of them is on, it's gonna be acting like a short circuit to ground. So whenever both of them are off, no current flows through either one. That means there is no path for current to go through this resistor anywhere else. So the voltage drop is gonna be zero. We're gonna get VCC on our output. So if both of them are zero, we get a one on our output. Now, if either one of them starts to conduct, what is gonna happen is that they're going to act like a short circuit to ground. So they're gonna kind of short our output to ground. And whenever that happens, we're going to get a large drop across that resistor. And if either one of them is on, we're going to get a zero on our output. So it doesn't matter if B is on, if A is on, or they're both on, we're always gonna get that zero on the output because they're just taking away too much current and shorting our output to ground, okay? So this is a NOR gate. I'm trying to draw the symbol as best as I can. So that is a NOR gate. And that means that the output is gonna go low anytime either one of the inputs is high. Now, we know that we can turn this into an OR gate if we just add an inverter at the end, kind of like we just did with our NAND gate, and that'll turn it into just a normal OR gate, okay? So we can turn that into just an OR gate by adding an inverter, okay? Now, I hope that you've gotten a chance to see that even though we can make these logic circuits with BJTs, they just don't perform as well as, log as logic circuits with MOSFETs because now we have to worry about input currents into both of these inputs. We have to worry about voltage drops. It becomes a whole lot more complicated, okay? And you also end up needing more components. So if you have the option, I would suggest doing logic circuits and any sort of switching with MOSFETs. But if you only have BJTs, I think it's still important that you know how to implement them and make sure that your devices are protected. So if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'm more than happy to answer them. If you like this content, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to see more. It really does keep me very highly motivated to keep making videos. Other than that, thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.